in a world for friends one mission to bring freedom to everyone involved dude what the fuck are you doing I'm doing the thing for the podcast dude, just say the name <sighs> fine it's the freedom friends podcast <laughs> Welcome back, boys. Good evening, everyone. Look at all these freedom friends that <laughs> showed up for this episode. How are friends. you gentlemen doing today? Oh, buddy, I'm good. How are you? Good. How are got... you guys' weekends? Uh, I drank a lot this weekend. It was nice. <laughs> I like that. Had, had some uh, date weekend. It was kind of nice, kind of nice. That was like a theme this weekend. You were telling me you did the same thing. I did. I uh, had some drinks, spent a lot of time with my old lady, took her shopping, did the uh, date thing. And uh, it was nice. It, the nice. Uh, link, the uh, weekend felt way longer than they uh, typically do for some reason. You know, it did it for me, too, awesome. and I think it's because I dipped out Friday about noon. That might have done <laughs> and, uh, that that might have it. Done it was an extended weekend. Yeah, I didn't come back till Monday, so. <laughs> That'll do it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. How about you, Mikey? How was your weekend? Mine was good, dude. Uh, boys were back in school, so it was the first weekend back at the house after school, and they were a little stir crazy, but yeah, man. Well, I mean, I talked to you Saturday. Yeah. And you could hear. I'm sure you could hear in the background my maniacs going out of the, out of their mind. But yeah, yeah I couldn't that. tell if that was home life or you were back in combat. Like there was. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing, man. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Everybody asks. They give me shit all the time. They're like, Mikey, how come you're always lifting weights and stuff? And I was like, Bro, I have two kids with my DNA, both with penises that are gonna grow up here in about ten years and want to fight me. <laughs> like, I gotta take these fuckers out, man. Like, and they're already <laughs> drinking White Claw. Dude, uh, like, like they're fucking, I'm telling you, man. God. John, I, John I think I'm going to implement a rule a on this podcast. Like, you have to knock out ten push-ups if you, this is the last time it's allowed, if you say the fucking word White Claw. <laughs> <laughs> ten push-ups. Ten push-ups? No more. <laughs> it is, we'll, we'll save that for the uh, Mike, veterans. Get swole I mean, real you quick. know, like. I can do push-ups all day, dude. I'm good with that. <laughs> I, I want to be known as the podcast, as the veteran group that has cock and balls. Like, I don't want to be known as the the as the as the the, bro, the, the whiskey as, Charlie, the whiskey yeah, Charlie. Yeah, group. as the whiskey Charlie. You to say that if, drinking, you drink, if you drink White Claw, you lose your man card. And there in is, my eyes, start you pushing. do. In my eyes, you do. Sorry, oh, Jack so Mandeville. Start pushing. <laughs> <laughs> that's he ten. Laid the rule. That's you laid it ten. Out. Start pushing, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Are we doing it? No. We'll, yeah, we'll save push. it to the no, end. No, the camera's rolling. Start pushing. It's not even going to see me. We can count it out. <laughs> yeah. They only sure. need to hear you suffer. you got a lot of NCOs around the table, man. We can count this down for you. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> I haven't done push-ups in so long. I don't even know if I can do 10. I'm sure Perfect. you can remember the I'm front sure, leading I'm, rest I'm position I'm sure you're okay easily. doing 10. I'm pretty sure. You know, one of the best teachers I ever had in, like, ninth grade was uh, my English teacher. Like, like, as soon as the bell rang, first day of school, me being the smartass, I say, school sucks. And she's like, 10 push-ups. I was like, what? <laughs> she made me like, she, she was like a, like a, like a state patrolman nice. like before she became a teacher. And she, like, she was hardcore, dude. She was good shit, man. Miss nice. Canyon, if you're out there, hope you're doing well. <laughs> so uh, to kick this off right, I just finished that one. So can I snag uh, whatever you have stored away sure. in the box over there? Today, yeah. What are we smoking uh, on today? We are bringing you the 50 Cal Field, which is our Maduro. It's a... Medium bodied Maduro, uh, kind of mild for a Maduro. Uh, real good flavors, lets a little sweetness come through. Uh, you get some of that cocoa, maybe some a hint of coffee in there. Uh, good retro. Uh, All of which can be found at tobacco.com. What has changed this, the, my, the normal flavor of this just a little bit for me the is, the, uh, is the drink that we're having tonight. Yeah. Uh, let's and, talk about and, the drink for yeah, a minute. Yeah, what, what's the drink of the day? I went with a mint julep. Now, those of you watching and listening who aren't in Texas, that means that you're not sweating your asshole off as soon as you step outside of the door because it is warm out there. <laughs> it's a little toasty. <laughs> we're also it's in the little, humid part of the season, yeah, too. Yeah, man. So like, it is just... a nasty day today. Um and I thought, well, we're doing a Maduro cigar. We got to at least have a bourbon drink of some sort. So I decided to go with the old summer classic, the mint julep. So, so I will yeah. point out that that is the only part of the show that was actually planned. Is yeah. Warfighter Tobacco knew what we were smoking. Let us know ahead of time. He picked the appropriate <laughs> drink. <laughs> Past that. I, I will tell you, this drink, it tricked me. It, it does. Me. When I, it, I smelled yeah. it, and my brain was like, ooh, mojito, because of the mint. And I tasted it, and my mouth's like, 
whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> oh, whiskey. whiskey. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's whiskey. <laughs> this is my first mint julep, by the way. Yeah. Thank you for this. Give it a good shake, man. Yeah, yeah. So being your first one, Mikey, why don't you uh, break it down real quick on how you make an appropriate mint julep? Because it's uh, not a complicated thing. It's beverage. not a complicated thing. And, and the cool thing is that there's, there's very little shaking and stirring. You don't have to build the cocktail. You actually make it in the cup. Now, I'm using the same cups that we used for the uh, Moscow Mules. And he didn't wash them. They're seasoned. <laughs> no, I didn't wash them. But, like, because technically it's supposed to be made in what's called a julep tin, which is another tin drink fucking container. Right. But these work just as fine. But you want a metal container. Uh, you throw a couple leaves of mint in there, muddle it up, just kind of enough to express it a little bit. Throw some uh, some uh, Angostura bitters uh, or Angostura. No. And Gostra. And Gostra is what you would call it. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, apparently I'm fucked up. There's some mango in there. Quarter ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of bourbon, and uh, stir the shit out of it. Throw crushed ice on it, preferred. And uh, top it with a little splash of soda. We didn't have any. I put a little water in there. That works too. And uh, what was the. Uh, so. Uh, the the bourbon that we use tonight. I use Bullet. I don't particularly. I'm not a particular big fan of Bullet bourbon straight. Sorry, Bullet Bourbon fans. I know that's like a popular one, but I do like it when I'm making cocktails. I think it's a good cocktail bourbon. However, so. if anybody from Bullet Bourbon is listening, yeah, man. <laughs> we will make drinks. Yeah, I'll use your shit every fucking time. <laughs> 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 this week. <laughs> so, speaking of this week, uh, if you listen to the last episode, I gave a story about... Uh, <laughs> a new segment that probably won't continue because how often is something like that going to happen? This but a is new why I carry. Called this is why I carry, and I have an update about uh, that whole situation. Oh, that's exciting! Yeah. So the uh, you saw his dick finally. I, okay. Well, no. He woke up I, the other I morning. He opened his blinds and it was just swinging. <laughs> and, and, and if you haven't listened to the previous episode, maybe we should tell him quick what we're recap. talking about. All right, so I'll give the, uh, <laughs> quick I'll give the, uh, the quick recap. Uh, last weekend, I made ten second elevator speech. All right. So last weekend, uh, <laughs> Tap class. my old lady walked outside to take the dog out, came back inside three seconds later and said, I think you need to go outside and handle this. Uh, gave me a brief, break, brief breakdown of what was going on. I uh, concealed my weapon, walked outside to find a six foot two African-American man who was oiled from head to toe, just dick a swinging, hanging out on the <laughs> stairs outside. Uh, Nude. Just butt naked. He, she had apparently found him <laughs> masturbating on the stairs. Uh, so I went out and informed him that he had about zero seconds to leave the property or there was going to be problems. Uh, he proceeded to leave, turned and said, well, can I get a cigarette? And I was like, no, you can leave. Well, Dude, you know, everybody, get the fuck out of here. Everybody <laughs> needs a cigarette after a quick <laughs> session. Right? You know? Look, I understand One the need for the cigarette. Just, I didn't want to be involved. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this guy just gives me the... Gives me the uh, and then turns and proceeds to run away, which is good. It's going to take a few more of these drinks to get that image out of my head. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I called the police. The police showed up. I told them. And this was apparently uh, another one of my neighbors had an interaction at like 6 a.m. with this dude and called the cops on him and da 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 So anyways, after some sleuth work from San Antonio's finest, mm. they were actually able to figure out who this cat was. You said his mom lived in the, in the uh, It turns place. out his mom lives in the building. Yeah. Uh, How old is this fine gentleman? Do you know? If I had to guess, he's probably 32 to 38. Oh, so he's had like, many years of practice. Yeah, yeah. no, this, this was not an amateur hour. Like, so this but was, he's black, though. I mean, so he's probably like in his 50s and just dude, looks, he was <laughs> looks like he's yeah, like 20 years old. Yeah, they, they age way better. So, yeah. They age so much better than we do. Dude, and I'm pretty Rock. sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I took my weapon because I'm pretty sure this dude was part Wookiee. He could have beat me to death with this thing. Yeah. Like, it was. Large man, huh? Well, he was, was carrying a baseball bat, too. Yeah, it was nuts. Fucking swanging. <laughs> it, was, it was aggressive. Swanging. So I got Jess, a call today. you get a black eye? I don't want to talk about yeah, it. I, I, I really, really don't want to talk about it. It would have been both eyes, man. Like, it, been... <laughs> it would have been like broken ocular sockets. <laughs> yeah, it smashed <laughs> nose. It would have been bad. You might as well have Barry Bonds much. Fucking I would have been calling. Head. I would have either been calling you or John going like, look, I need you to lie with me and say that we got in a fight and you just <laughs> fucked me up. Like, I don't know. <laughs> And John would have been the second person to lie with you that day. Yeah, that'd, have been, that'd have been like, I can't. Not in the biblical sense. Yeah, not, I can't. I'd be less embarrassed about saying that John kicked my ass than I would be about what actually happened. No, yeah. so I got a I got a phone call today from a uh, Detective Ross at the SAPD. So shout out to you, Detective Ross, if you'll mm. ever hear this. Uh, 
who uh, the file came across his desk this morning, apparently. He immediately recognized the name of the suspect, uh, called me, and called uh, my fiance, asked us to come down and do a... Uh, literally goes, I need you to come down and do a visual identification and lineup. And I was like, I don't know if I want to see that lineup, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes... No, it's just pictures. And I was like, I don't need to see pictures either. Like, <laughs> Do you like, recognize his mind, penis? Man. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> he's like, no, it's just the face. And I was like, that's probably going to be harder for me to actually identify at this point. <laughs> yeah. I never saw his face. I just couldn't stop staring yeah, at this guy's dick. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, so I go down there, do the whole thing, give my statement, whatever. And he tells me, he's like, you actually, you correctly identified the suspect, blah, 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 blah. And it turns out in the week from when it happened at my place to now another incident happened and homeboy got picked up and is already in jail so now since we've given our statements on to them fucking yeah, charges well so, it's convenient so since yeah. we gave our statements and correctly identified him it has now been elevated to a class three felony so this is like a three strikes you're out kind of situation. He, go, he going away for a while. For a while. And I'm like, so you're going to spend the majority of the rest of your life behind bars because you couldn't figure out how to close a door to rough up the suspect. Nah, he'll, like, be up, he'll be on parole in like three years, man. Well, I mean, no, apparently he was out. This, he was, He's double <laughs> bond. So this one, he was out on bond already. Wow. Okay. And, the, and he's got prior charges for public indecency. So this is like a, an ongoing thing. The dude. dude told me they actually had a photograph of this cat when the cops found him in a car fully nude in a public space uh, and photographed it because he had passed out due to drug use in the car. It, it makes, makes me wonder, dude, if, if there's a legitimate uh, like mental case to be made for that guy, though. You know what I mean? Because that's not what fucking a sane person does. Well, I don't know. You know, like, If your hammer was that big. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, around friends, but not fucking strangers, dude. <laughs> yeah. like, I thought no, like, I knew so, what circles you hung out with, but I'm not sure I do anymore. Here's why I actually double checked. Like, I would flop it on the bar right now if it was like that. I'd be like, right. sorry, YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to stir my drink real quick. <laughs> I actually... So, although I was upset and everything that my fiance had to have the interaction, and this was going on on, on my apartment and stuff, and like, you know where I live in town. Like, I don't live in a bad part of town. No, you so, live in a good, good area. Yeah. Um, I was upset I about that. that. It's, it's, it's San Antonio. <laughs> well, I mean, most of San Antonio is good. It used to be a good area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now I want to move. Uh, it actually, the, uh, yeah, when you the slip cop going was down there. Your stairs on that oil spot. And I was. Uh, <laughs> I was super happy that I was able to go down and positively ID this guy and now he's telling me like he's going away for a while because it turns out that uh, about a week before my phone call a police report was made uh, because these kids were outside playing and had seen this dude on a bench and uh, doing the same thing and they went inside to get the parents and by the time the parents came outside to uh, confront this dude he had ghosted so right there I was like alright that's a zero tolerance thing yeah. you start you get into that pedo shit yep. and yep. like it's one thing being a pervert yeah you start getting involved with kids or whatever like yeah I mean like I was more upset that my woman got to see it because it's like look that's not the standard she's like wait he's an outlier <laughs> like <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> that's not what it's supposed to look like yeah don't make no, comparisons you, you told me that, 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 that this was normal yeah so, uh, but He's as soon as I heard, as soon as I heard there was kids, I was like, no, I'm like "What do I need to do to put this dude away for as like as long as I can?" So and they were like, yeah. "Can you come down and make a statement, do a photo?" I was like, "Yep, I can be there. What time do you need me there?" <laughs> He's like, "Well, you can come as soon as you can." I was like, "I can be there in an hour. Let's do yeah. this." Yeah. And uh, Sorry, so yeah, good show. news. Uh, the system worked, and uh, nice. homeboy is uh, he's gonna go find friends that will be more than happy to. Uh, Help I'm, him take his clothes off. I'm somebody's off. bitch, dude. Yeah. If he's got a hammer, if he's got a hammer like that, though, he's gonna, dude. He's gonna be popular in prison. Well, maybe, but he's gonna maybe, be the, maybe he was just missing. Yeah, prison. but maybe. as soon as as soon as Jim Pop finds out that there was kids around, and that's one of the charges, that's Ooh, all over. That's true. That changes everything. Yeah, that's true. That that turns into a different even world. The, even yeah. the convict community isn't big on pedos. So uh, yeah, a little better topic. In, yeah. in a, <laughs> so that's the update. <laughs> no, uh, homeboy went to jail. So, good man. Good. In, in reference to a couple of the previous episodes, and we talked about um, getting uh, suicided by the Clintons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I decided that uh, I got I got new internet this weekend. My old internet. the The old internet that I had it wasn't a good internet. It was right. a bad internet. It was a bad internet. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing. So they they had to come give me a, a new internet. Okay. And uh, they a actually whole had a, new internet. There's nothing no, on they it. Did. They had to run. Brand new they had to run new new lines and everything like. My old internet was bad. So the new internet they gave me is fancy. 
like super fancy yeah. and it's fast and it works and it doesn't shut off or any of that but fold your napkin for you it's a fancy it had this crazy like network name like whatever just came factory and it made no sense yeah, letters the, numbers the giant alphanumeric yeah. whatever and the passwords like 46 characters and the blood of my firstborn and like all kinds sure. of shit so I had to go change it. And uh, so my new network uh, name is Information Leading to Hillary's Arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're trying to get murdered. Like, you're trying I'm going to see how far I can push the envelope. Uh, <laughs> my Wi Fi network is uh, FBI Safe House. Yeah. Is your uh, life insurance up to date and all that good stuff? Uh, yes. Does it, pay out? Does it pay out if you commit suicide? Well, it depends if it was uh, voluntary or involuntary. <laughs> <laughs> And then what was the other one? I had another network name, too, because I got a 2.4 and a 5G. The other one was pretty funny, too, but it didn't beat the Hillary one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yep. So yours nice. is FBI Safe House? Yeah, or yeah. Surveillance Fan, that's, actually. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's, <laughs> mine's, it was it was FBI fan. Safe House in Nebraska. Yeah, it's Surveillance yeah. Fan. Mine's CIA Surveillance Fan 47. Nice. Like, that's, the, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Mikey's, Mikey's is click here for porn. Dude, my, <laughs> yeah, my wheels are turning, though. i got to come up with something. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm so behind it. The only reason I did something fancy is because my neighbors is it hurts, H-E-R-T-Z, when I pee. The letters IP. Oh, that's funny. And I was like, oh, Damn, bro. That's like, good. Okay, that's I got to get good something one. good. That's good. Yeah. All right. All right. You just change yours to the password is all caps. <laughs> I used to have, don't so, make the password all caps. Right. So like just, the Bluetooth in my truck, if it can't be like somebody wanted to, hey, can I connect in, on my old truck? Can I connect to your stereo and play music? I'm like, yeah, sure. They're like, what's your blue? And then they stop because my Bluetooth name for my truck was <laughs> Yell Penis for Code. <laughs> so then I was on here, penis. And I'm like, that's one, two, three, four. They're like, I asshole. <laughs> oh, silly it should be done. Speaking of Wi Fi. Yeah. Uh, I got a Traeger grill this weekend. Uh oh. Yeah. The Traeger. The the new, nice. the grill new, the new Traeger Pro. Smoker. Yeah, but it's a new version of it. Oh, really? Those mm. are fucking money, dude. So. Like, I was on the fence because I heard some horror stories. I looked at reviews, like the whole nine. The old Traegers just, you know, they didn't work the greatest. Their, their whatever, command center. What's, a, what's, yeah, a, what's it called? Yeah, the module. That little brain. Yeah, yeah the yeah. thing that, that, I had makes, to that makes it all work. Times. It doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, the auger gets clogged, like all this stuff, right? So then I start reading reviews on the new ones. Like, oh, the grill is great, except uh, the app didn't work or it didn't, the, it was off by 100 degrees uh, and it wasn't calibrated or Holy this hell. or that or all this stuff, right? And I was like, ah. Uh. And then I looked at the good reviews, which were obviously way more. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. Love Tra- this is probably user error. Yeah. I'm it's, like, Trigger's got a good name. Yeah. If something's wrong with it, I guarantee you their customer service is going to take care of it. I was sure. like, let's, let's gamble and sure. see if this works. For at least a year. Yeah. Well, a three year warranty. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice, no. dude. Right? Shit, that alone. Yeah. As long as my car. And then they're, then, <laughs> yeah. And then they were like, well, for another $149, you can get a two year warranty on this. I'm like, it comes with three. Like, is that on top of. That's two years on top of the. Would you buy? Would you buy it out of Home Depot? Yeah, that uh, just means you can take it to Home Depot and they'll they'll give you a new. No, one. Home Depot's like you got to go through Traeger, but you can get a military discount. Ten percent off. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, so get the grill. Uh, went home, put it all together, season season it the whole nine. Yep. Uh, plugged everything and everything worked. It's got an app. The app controls the grill. That's awesome. Links into your Wi-Fi. It's got a meat probe. Um, it's got a meat probe mm-hmm. that you can see on your app. Like the whole night. The thing was awesome. And I'm like, holy shit, it all works. It connected to my Wi Fi. It connected to my phone. I can control things. And I'm like, maybe I got the one that worked, you know? Shit, shit. So the next day, I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to smoke it. It was an eight pound pork loin. I'm like, I'm going to smoke this. See if it works. I did the whole recipe thing. Well, the recipe called for three pounds of meat. I'm cooking eight. So I'm like, ah. Well, it's probably gonna be like four, four and a half, five hours, Let's maybe. Do a little math, yeah. It, you know, we'll we'll figure it out. Whatever. I'm gonna throw it on the grill and I'm gonna go ice skating. In San Antonio, Texas. In San Antonio, Texas. You so go one off uh, Northwoods off, Ice uh, Rink, sixteen oh four, sixteen oh four in Redland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Northwoods Ice yeah. Rink. Yep. And uh, so I'm literally up there skating, and I'm like, ah, like back in my mind, I'm like, ah, I hope I don't fuck this meet up. Like that's the first time I fuck it up. It's okay. Can I'll you learn. open your app? Oh. So I'm skating around. All of a sudden, I hear ding. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, uh, none of my notifications are set up for that. So I pull my phone out, and it's a an, uh, uh, notification from Traeger app saying that my meat has reached 145 degrees. I'm like, what? So I click on it, and I'm like, no way this works here. I'm just on regular cellular, not even Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. 
pulls up, shows me everything. I hit the keep warm button. It drops the temperature of the grill to 165. It stayed like that for another hour and a half till I got home. Got there, the fucking meat was perfect. And I'm like, dude, I'm a smoking champion right now. Well, I, so, I don't even have to be there. You just yeah. brought bacon in. I know. And the bacon was delicious. So, so if Traeger would like to be a sponsor of the <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we would love to have I would love to try <laughs> a Traeger grill. All I'm saying is that <laughs> app, like, I literally... Started it up, seasoned the meat and everything, threw it on there, and left the house. Hmm. I don't know if you ever talked to anybody that, that smokes. Yeah, you got to babysit yeah. it. Yeah, you sit there and you drink the whole time. You're hammered by the time it's done. You don't know if it tastes good or not. It turns out like a hockey puck uh, on the 4th yeah, of July. Sorry, I got really drunk. I defer to my boy Jared, who's like a champion barbecuer, and he, uh, he runs a YouTube channel called uh, Frack Daddy Barbecue, and uh, Jared is just... Like he's ruined brisket for me. Right, like, right. like I can't eat a brisket anymore because every time I eat one, it's like this tastes like butthole compared to. Oh, yeah. Jared, we, we got a cutting board and a knife. Line. We got a cutting board. The color wait, wait, on that thing. thing. Hey, That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Wait, wait. We have a cutting board. Bust right, out the cutting right board there. and a knife. So and, and we officially knife live pieces. in the future, man. Because over the weekend, I bought a, uh, I bought a Roomba. A Roomba. Nice. One of these, like oh. one of these vacuum robots speaking of the vacuum robots and uh i bought one of the newer ones and one of the new the new ones Is are they have an app drive on them. like they app. they have an app so you you get up you get the roomba you press the right keystroke or whatever the and it opens app. up its wi-fi signal and uh it like lets you rename it and the whole nine yards and then you can like it charges up and then it learns your house and then it does all this stuff nice so i did it i made it wellington because i decided that i wanted to have if it was gonna, if it was gonna, bottle, yeah, bottle my penis. Bottle my, <laughs> bottle my penis. I decided if I was gonna have this thing that just, uh, you guys try some of that? random, like, damn it, you took the piece I wanted. Oh, sorry, my bad. Mm. I decided if I was gonna have this robot That's that was good. gonna walk around and clean my house, I wanted to name it something British. Did you see the guy? So I named it Wellington, and today it's scheduled to Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. It's supposed to vacuum my house. Mm -hmm. So today. I'm sitting at work, and all of a sudden, my phone did the same thing. Just goes ding. Look at my phone. It says Wellington has completed a job. Yeah, you, you should. Have <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't were, open it up. We we're at the office, I and saw it was that. like it wandered my house. It had uh, it found four interactions with dirt. So it like <laughs> it like wanders your house and is like oh, and one interaction with dog poo. There's Man. a <laughs> drug in all there's of that. Your, dog, your dog's in the crate. Right here. My dog's in the crate. Dude, because if She's your dog was, right now. she would be freaking the fuck out, man. <laughs> the robot run. The like, cat <laughs> hates the robot. Did you see? I did can't you have see, one, uh, man. My dogs would lose it, their shit. There was a guy that took a Roomba and he hooked up a something to it that every time it made a bump, it swore. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if if somehow that dude hears this podcast, then you can send me the firmware yeah. software <laughs> that, that I yeah. need for my Roomba to cuss while it's Ow. walking around the house. Fuck. What Shit. was the one that you were telling me about? It's like a Roomba, but for dog poop in your backyard? Yes, yeah. yeah, so they have a new one that picks up dog poop in your there's backyard. There's one that hops. There's also one that will clean your pool. No, I've seen so the there's, pool a, there's a new yeah, show no. on Netflix. And they make one for a mower, too, that'll just mow your lawn. There's yeah, a new yeah. show on Netflix. If Pick you're looking for something to watch, and it's called Better Than Us. And it is literally what our world right now is eventually going to get into. It's about That's crazy. robots that are sex dolls. Oh, here we go. No. Right and like it's a common thing in everybody's household, and it like does chores and all this stuff, and then but also we'll there's you another know, I was say, You know what? I, I don't need but, a sex robot. I just need a robot that so does all my chores. The dude that <laughs> that owns like the largest robot company in the world on the show, yeah, uh, buys a black market robot from China, right? And all these robots are not a single robot in the world, according to the show, has killed a person, except for this robot they bought. This dude got in the black market from China. <laughs> it killed him? And it, no, it's designed to, to learn a family and then do anything to defend and keep this family safe. Including if somebody's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hurt you. The robot's just going to be like, whap, you're dead. Oh, huh. wow. Yeah. So Doesn't that I just break got the into, three laws of robotics then? Well, I don't know what the three laws of robotics are. It's, yeah, uh, you're going to have to elaborate on that warning, one. Warning, do not threaten me when you enter this home or my robot will kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the three laws of robotics... I'm going to mess the quote up so nobody freaked good, the huh? fuck out. I'll, your meat in my but, mouth uh, is amazing. But the first law is, uh, I will take no action that will do harm to a human. Hmm. Uh, I will follow no orders that will that could harm a human. Uh, and I will, like, they won't stand idly by if harm was to be done to a human. But those three laws mm. of robotics... Oh, they found it for me. So if a human's going to... The three gonna... laws of robotics... Uh, 
A robot must not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Oh. And those are they're it's supposed to essentially because they they can cancel each other out. It's it's supposed to lock the action. So do they have like a, a like a, a paragraph of code that like every robot has to have this code? No, so like, like your the Roomba? three laws of robotics. <laughs> if I'm correct, if your Roomba ever kills you, I'm going to sue. Isaac Asimov. Your Roomba's going to grab a kitchen knife and start chasing around the house. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah, I'd be fucking. <laughs> I thought about just taping a knife to the Roomba and just <laughs> like remember have you seen what like those cat? have you know. seen like those killbot those killbot tournaments where like the guys yeah. build their those fucking robots rowdy. and they like fucking are those robots though robot murder each other oh those are remote controlled that's a remote yeah. controlled creature what's what are you looking what am I looking? yeah Isaac Asimov wrote the yep. three laws of robotics so hey, yes uh, like I, I stated before on the hyper I feel like we do need to acknowledge somebody else that's here today um we've expanded our production team yeah no shit we got bit. uh we got old Rob over there making Mr. magic Rob, happen um, doing things Rob and Justin behind the camera doing their work and helping us out uh fellas thank you very much Rob also produces a number of shows for uh our community um so but like yeah, a man. robot he's here working as slave labor it's, yeah, uh, yeah 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 and he doesn't he isn't gonna kill us he's not gonna kill he's us, not gonna kill us no. <laughs> he's got the three oh. laws of producer yeah the three so, laws we know how to make him happy though we feed him booze and cigars yeah dude give him, give him a hey, shot you want to come up with the show i don't know man there's whiskey and cigars oh, oh shit yeah, right, yeah, yeah i'll do that <laughs> <laughs> rob you want to come introduce yourself sure he Hi, just said I'm sure i'm sure none of the mics actually picked that up but he's gonna come over and here you go. Rob, here you go, man. Oh, you gonna move it over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, guys? Uh, Rob here. I'm not here to take Justin's spot. He's doing a great job. I'm just here to supervise. He's young. <laughs> you know, he, he needs help. A little update <laughs> <little, laughs> on, on Justin. He's still alive. Justin is still alive. Yep. He didn't Jazz die. did not have to shoot Mikey. Yep. Yet. Yet. You know, I mean, that's expired, by the way, all right? No, that, there was no expiration date on that. Now, if he, if he dies of a heart problem, <laughs> now, now 20 Jazz, years from now, I'm just going to show up and be like, sorry, Mikey. A little backstory on no, this. You just, you have to, every year, you have to downgrade what you were going to shoot him with. Right. So 20 years from now, it's just an airsoft to the forehead. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, getting a paintball. <laughs> point blank paintball to the nuts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I'd rather get shot. <laughs> Jesus, man. Oh. Now, this is coming from the guy that's actually gotten shot. That's <laughs> been shot. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, oh man. Hell. So who's got the uh, the no so no shit for the week? John, you said you uh, thought you had one. Yeah, I'll get. I'll I'll, uh, I'll attempt this week's so no shit. Okay. So no shit. There we were, Scott and I. There we were. Um. This is back when we were in the military, back at Fort Campbell. Probably, what, 2001, 2002? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yep. Somewhere around there. This is uh, pre-deployment shit. So, yeah, this yeah. is pre-Iraq. We were, uh, this is post 9 was no. it post? No, no, it was pre 9 11. Yeah. Yeah. God. So it was probably 2000. The boring no, days. No, it was 2001. Okay. That's when I got Campbell. The boring days. Yeah. Ugh. We had to yell bang because we were on a budget cut and they yeah. didn't give us ammo. But about a jam. <laughs> yeah. So let's just call him N. N. Yes. Yeah. So, Staff Sergeant N. Yeah, Staff Sergeant N. <laughs> you know who you are, buddy. Um, so we were doing uh We got our unit got tasked out with doing uh, some downed aircraft recovery training. Um, so like a bird, something goes down, we get activated on like a QRF type deal and okay. go fly out and secure the bird. Make sure you know, gather whoever was on it. Or if like there's beat our team. survivors, do, dart. You know, we call it dart. yeah, dart. Um, Destroy sensitive material, you know, light the bird up and fucking get out of there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so every time we Go did one of these, grenades. yeah, every time we did one of these training missions, we all we always did multiple false insertions because before we, were we air, air assault unit before we Standard actually procedure. hit the target where there were the quote unquote downed aircraft was. Yeah. So they'd go park a bird somewhere, and then we'd go and fly in and like we would literally just touch and goes. Like that's it. We the wheels would hit. We'd open the doors, pause a second, shut the doors, take back off, fly around a little bit, and then actually hit our, our actually tar, our target. Well, this dude's a, a staff sergeant, E six squad leader. Squad leader. Yeah. Like in on the, all the op briefings. And supposed this is, to this brief. is this is a night thing, so it's that's a, dark that's a, out. That's a corporal in the Marine Corps, by the way, a squad leader. Anyway, well, we we have team leaders. Uh, <laughs> Those are lance corporals. Okay. <laughs> so what do your sergeants do? They're guides. Guides. The guides, guide or platoon sergeant. What? What do your staff sergeants do? Also platoon sergeant. What rank is your platoon sergeant? 
It could be a sergeant. No, what number? E huh? what? E5? E6? Is it two sergeant? What yeah. does an E7 do? How big, how big are usually company level stuff. How they big they are usually put company gunnies and stuff up. Okay. Yeah. What's your first, like a fir- acting first sergeant? No, we have a company gunny and then a first sergeant. So what's your company gunny rank? A gunny. E7. E7. I don't know what that is. E7. <laughs> Come on, John. E7. It's literally the same as the army. No, it isn't. Well, you guys I mean, we, yeah, just, we don't have gunnies, man. We do shit like earlier is all. Yeah. Like, oh. And then you slack off as you get older. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Oh, got it. That makes yeah. sense. Makes so you get sense. your squad yeah. early, but then for the next two ranks, you just do the same fucking thing. Oh, basically. Yeah, Sometimes. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. anyway. Yeah. anyway so, sorry. Sorry to so, I'm sorry. Night ops. So we do, uh, we're doing a night ops. He's part of the, all the mission briefs. He's part of the planning aspects of it. He's briefing his guys on what he has to do. What that bird has. I would happen to be in a squad at the time. So I get to sit in on these briefs. So I'm literally taking notes because I'm a new private. And I'm like, oh, I can't fuck this up. You know, everyone's counting on me. And I'm taking notes. I'm like, okay, false insertion here, false insertion there. Actual aircraft and landing. Door's going to open on all of them. But that this one, the last one, is the one that we have to get out on and go secure the area. Here's my job. Here's a job to my guys on my left and right. I'm fucking in. Let's do this. Sure. Right? Super pumped. First time going to be in a helicopter. Like, Good boost. we're doing some crazy oh, cool you were, stuff. You were a young I was super young new. Just yeah, yeah. Hype, hype, hype. Yeah. Hype, hype, and I'm like, yeah. oh, it's going to be awesome. Like, this is Black Hawk shit. Like, oh. So we get in the birds. We take off. We go to false insertion number one. Bird touches down. Picks back up. I'm like, sweet. We're fucking golden. On the we're road. almost getting there. Let's do I this. I didn't fall out. Right? So we had we had a second false insertion, then it we had the crash. actual objective. Right? <laughs> so second false insertion, wheels hit down, doors open. Sergeant, Sergeant N. N decides, you know what, this is my stop. I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what? The birds took back off. He got out, right? Literally. Three steps, drop, turned and looked. As he turned and looked, that door shut and the bird went, whoop, took off, <laughs> gone. He's the only one that got out. Middle of the, middle of the night. S- sitting there as a brand new private and I'm like, ah, ah, <laughs> whatever, door shut, bird's taken back off. Uh, I guess we're, I guess he's staying here. Which number were you out the door? I just followed everybody. At a black, at black hockey. It doesn't matter. Just, yeah, whoever's just closest, out, you fall out. Sure, okay. This dude physically got out on his own. At a false insertion where he briefed all of us on what we were supposed to and not supposed to do. <laughs> Maybe the had rest, to and it was like three clicks in the middle of the woods yeah, away at, from at anything. Night, no, like I don't even know. Back 44 do you, Campbell. Do you know how they got him or how? He had to walk back to. Did he hump it in? No, yeah, he did. He had to walk. <laughs> it took like six, eight hours for it, for him to get back. That's awesome. Because uh, he, guess, wasn't, he wasn't no. the best land to have yeah, Well, I guess he did have radio comm. He yeah, I remember listening. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> well, now, no, what rank were you at this point? I was probably an E four the first time. Yeah, the first, <laughs> the first time. time. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I think I was a team leader or something. So I had, I think I, I was listening. But no, he had, was glorious. He had to walk oh, back man, the whole funny. way, or I not think, the whole way. I don't remember. Did but they, it was like six send, hours. They didn't send like a Humvee out for him or anything like oh, that. Fuck it no. was the middle of the night. No. We, we didn't have Humvees. Oh, I mean, we were just doing an air assault. You know. Yeah. No. They. No. Nobody sent anybody to get him. It's his fault. Uh, <laughs> and it's not like he was uh, in amazing. imminent danger. He was in Fort Campbell. Yeah. True. So right? I got another story. I got a follow-on story because <laughs> since we're talking about Staff Sergeant N, so <laughs> <laughs> same guy. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. Same Staff Sergeant N. You know who you are. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we were doing uh, the Mount City in uh, Fort Campbell one time, and I was playing Op Four, I think, and uh, and I was inside a building, and his squad or whatever was assaulting our building, and so we had blanks and we had you know whatever, and uh, I'm like right at a window. And uh, I remember Staff Sergeant N popping up in the window, and I'm about from me to across the bar away. And I'm like, bang, with a blank, you know? I'm like, gotcha. You <laughs> he know? lost his shit. And he lost his <laughs> shit. One, I scared the fuck out of him. I bet. <laughs> and uh, two, I was I was aiming right at him with a blank. It's got a blank adapter. Like, yeah, you got to be a fake. Yeah, you're pretty safe, you know? Yeah. But he, he tried to smoke me, and I was talking mad shit. I think I was an E5 at that point. Maybe I don't remember, but uh, I'm just like I'll do. I was doing push-ups, and I'm like, "Yeah, you're just pissed off. I fucking killed you and scared the shit out of you <laughs> because you fucking turned connected into the window. You <laughs> pooped a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he had to change his shorts that night. Yeah, that was pretty oh, funny. man. I took a BFA to the eye one time. Really, dude? Fuck. It's like my second day in the fleet. Like <laughs> fucking super boot, Mikey. 
they're like, hey, you're going to go out and be up for for a, a five day war for this this officer class, this like officer students. And I was like, OK, they put me in white urban camouflage. That was like the uniform for the Makes op sense. four. So we went to combat town. You ever seen uh, uh, Heartbreak Ridge? Mm-hmm. That combat town? Mm-hmm. It's AK-47, sir. Yeah. That combat town is where this happened. <laughs> I was in that combat town. We were supposed to be in that, that, that church with the bell tower. That's where I was supposed to be. Yeah. And they were like, all right, go put your sweatshirt on because that, you're going to play a refugee for this. We just smoked them on the last op. And right. they were like, all right, you're going to play a refugee on this next one. So go get your sweatshirt on. I was like, okay, sweatshirt in the back of the five ton. So I go running over, jump in the back of a five ton. It's backed up to the, some bleachers. So I jump in, grab my sweatshirt. I lean my rifle on the bleachers and I jump down and I go to grab my rifle and dude started the five ton, but it was in gear. It was still in reverse. So it lunged back, hits me in the shoulder. I come down, catch my rifle on the way down, catch that BFA right in my eye. Oh, Ooh. so I didn't get shot off. No, no. 26, oh. 26 stitches in my fucking eye, man. Holy if that what? Corman... That patched me up because you can't even tell anymore. No, like I mean, you have to really look. You notice it's a little wrinkly. That's oh, it. I thought it was because you're old. No, actually, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a common misconception. No, Mike <laughs> moisturizes, man. Um, yeah, I got the nerve. All my black friends finally told me the secret. Fucking moisturize, man. Butters. <laughs> but like, I uh, if I ever meet that Corman, and if you're fucking listening, dude, if you ever gave some crazy PFC that was wearing white camouflage. <laughs> Uh, a fucking uh, stitch job in his eyeball, dude. Contact me because I owe you a fucking beer, dude. Nice. <laughs> like, but yeah, it was like my second day. I show back up to the barracks after like getting out of the naval hospital. Like the duty driver had to come pick me up and shit. And like I'm all patched up, had like a patch on my eye. I look like fucking you know S- Snake Pliskin for a couple days. So since you've been out of the military, mm-hmm. have you gotten any stitches, broken bones, cuts, shot, anything? I mean, probably cuts and bruises, but nothing... No stitches. Like, nothing like... You know what? I don't think I've had stitches since I got out. No. No? No. So, what was the difference while you were in the military? Train hard, man. That led Train to... Train hard, play hard. All the Purple Hearts, <laughs> the eye, all the other stuff. Where as soon as you get Situ- out... <laughs> situation dictates, my friend. <laughs> Jesus. Mikey drank the Kool Aid when they were in there telling right. him that Marines are invincible. He was like, yeah. Marines are invincible. You are now a bullet catcher. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> the other team had a say in that one. You know, now there's you know not really another team. So Jeez. So I have a question about uh, Staff Sergeant N. Yeah. Was this during the uh Army of One days for the US? Yeah, could, yeah. That's like maybe maybe that's right? maybe he was yeah, just army of one. He was. He was God, we made so much fun of you guys. That was the worst. We made so much fun of you guys for that army shit. Man. Ever had? Yeah. Hey, I, army I joined in the, in the be all you can be era. Yeah, so that I. one wasn't bad. Army Strong's not bad. Be all you can be is good to go. Army yeah. Strong's good to go. Yeah. Army of one. Fuck out of here, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's just because all of the they were just trying to get millennials to enlist. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Speaking of this, okay, so we had the uniform working for us and like the chess match, and like we're fighting like lava monsters with our swords and shit. (laughs) Like our commercials were just fucking cool, man. They 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 get you hooked. You sign up to the point. Oh, what did I do? Fuck yeah, dude! I want to fight the dragon. Heavy metal music video. Yeah. Yeah, the reality of what it really comes down to is... I want to play chess against a lava monster. The, the dragon you're fighting are all the drugs you get hooked on because yeah. you realize really, your life that, sucks that, so bad. That was actually the PTSD when you get out. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> they just didn't tell you that. It was a time. metaphor. It was, well, you don't get a sword, though. <laughs> you get a butter knife. So, so, butter so knife. John and I, we visited Fort Campbell, uh, I don't know, what, 2014? Probably yeah, maybe right, right somewhere there. in there, right? And one of the uh, one of the things we heard was they weren't letting units wear their combat patches because not everybody that had a oh, it's combat hurt, yeah. patch. Yeah, I heard about that. Feelings. Yeah, I heard about that. You know what? That that almost made me cry. Like I almost had a feeling over that. Almost had a feeling. Almost, almost. almost. But like, fuck your feelings. Like we don't we don't get patches. I just and stuff don't understand it. Right. Like I, I I could understand. Well, what? that'd be like them telling me, Muggy, uh, it's Thursday, or it's Friday, and we were supposed to wear Charlie's. You can't wear your uh, your combat action ribbon, right? Because everybody else is gonna feel bad. Yeah, fuck you, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I but it's a like, it's a softer, gentler force now. Mm. That's, the thing, like, that's not what wins wars, man. That's dude, scary. We, yeah. Down at work, yeah. we released a like, oh, freaking you, t-shirt. You, so you you didn't get your participation ribbon, so we're gonna take everybody else's participation right? ribbon away. Yeah. 
so that you don't feel bad. You, you can't yeah. wear your ranger tab because there's people in the platoon that aren't ranger qualified. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. those people just fucking suck. When, when, when I, I went to, when I, when I, when I, ranger when I went to ranger basic school. training, it was like 97, right? Nobody had a CIB. Oh, yeah. We had, we, had, we had one drill sergeant that had a CIB. And, and it was, was like. terrifying. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was fucking terrifying. Yeah. You know, we had like. Like when I was in, you had service stripes all the way up your arm and combat stripes. Nobody None. had it. Nobody had it. Now you have guys that like 17 combat stripes. And one and service and one stripe. Or two <laughs> service stripes. Like, Wait a minute. Does this math even work? I never understood yeah. that. I didn't know that that's what that was. I, I, yeah. have, more, I have more combat stripes I always thought than like, I have like, stripes. So you, you got a service stripe for every three years you were in and you got a combat stripe for every six months you were deployed to combat. Okay. And so... It would, yeah. you know, you yeah. could really get so cats that do six years and spend half of it overseas. I mean, that's totally possible. Yeah, to yeah. Do. two stripes and twelve fucking. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got my boy, I got my one boy service Nick. stripe and two combat stripes. My boy Nick Holcomb, uh, I contracted with him. He's an army vet. He he did uh, he did fucking like ten years. Got out as a PFC. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, right. He it must happens. have been a really good soldier. Hey, he fucking hey, did it right. Dude. It funny. happens, dude. Nick's money, dude. He was he's fucking hilarious too but like he showed me a picture uh he was uh what's the guys with the cowboy hats with the stetsons uh pokes gay that's cav right it's yeah, yeah. Oh, same thing oh. yeah. same thing <laughs> so he was one of those but he had fucking combat stripes like up to his fucking elbow right you know and it was just like jesus dude like and he was the one explained to me he's like oh that's that's six months in combat is everything and i was like right. what i was like man we don't get that like because we have stripes but ours, ours are just service stripes every four years you get one every four yeah. yeah we do it every four yeah yeah a little bit just little it's weird the little right. different nuances between services man like i i think the, the navy does does a similar thing but it's again it's four i think it's the same with us yeah. um well i remember seeing a blue cord in the air force for the first time and i'm like what isn't that like a sharp like no uh, that's uh I thought those security forces got the cord no i thought it was like the, a, the sharp prevention stuff i think security <laughs> forces. no really I'm, I'm dead serious can we get a fact Please check on that? Please tell me Thanks. Air that Force a blue, blue cord. cord. I'm serious. I, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with that. With sharks? No, sharp. Sharp. Yeah, oh, sexual okay. harassment and rape. I thought policy. you said shark. And I was like, program. shark? Sharp. I thought you said shark. And I was like, <laughs> there's a shark prevention unit? Person or whatever. Yeah. Program. You know what? Whatever. We should we should have somebody come in and just give us a sharp briefing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Good <laughs> lord. Just, That's how we lose no. listeners. Right? <laughs> That's how you fall asleep. Ugh. So actually, I got a funny story about that. <laughs> uh, it actually wasn't a sharp briefing, but uh, I was working on a base in uh, in Belgium, and so I was. Oh, we got a, we got a, we got an answer here. What do we got here on the on the Air on Force blue, blue cord rope for the Air Force? Blue rope. Blue rope is military training leader in MTL. This is not a student. It is an Air Force member, usually rank E four E five, who has volunteered for a special duty assignment. Uh, blah 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 blah. So it's a teacher. Anyway, yeah. So if like you're a, a sharp instructor, you get a blue cord. Yeah, but you could also be See, like a, we get the Fortage. Like fifth and sixth Marine regiments get the four, the French Fortage, but that's the only one we. That's yeah, the only but guys uh, get that shit. third gets that. Uh, Who I, gets the I red and it. green cord? I mean, oh, I had one of them. For I was a while. close. Was I was close. Okay, teal is kind of close to blue. Yeah. Right. So the teal rope in the Air Force is a sexual assault awareness. Get the fuck get out of here. I fucking swear to God. You get an award That's why I was like, I knew there was a lot of you guys constantly do shit that. that we're going to make fun of you about. Like, yeah, you're <laughs> not even fucking trying <laughs> anymore, oh, man. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Good God. Wow. I got Air Force in my family, man. Oldest brother was in the Air Force. My dad was in the Air Force. Like, it's like, you're fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. But no, so when I was working on this base in, in Europe, uh, one of the... the I don't know, training fucking bullshit things that I had to sit through. One of the classes like Sharp and stuff was, uh, I can't remember if it was Inside Attack or something like that. But anyways, they talked about when we were in Kuwait before we jumped the border going to Iraq oh, yeah. and they had the grenade attack. Yeah, that was our unit. Yeah, Camp Pennsylvania, oh. Kuwait. And we were like two tents away. We had trapped and go through our tent and everything. And we oh, found the, the fuck face that rolled the grenade? Yeah. The, yeah. No shit? Yeah, yeah. the dude oh, that found him was our first... I don't know if I want to go into too much detail about who he was. But anyways, he was in our unit that you found him, him. And he had a 1911 up to the trigger guard in this guy's mouth. We didn't get issued 1911s. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the fuck to get it. 
Yeah, Mind your business. Yeah. <laughs> this is oh, okay. three. We didn't know what we needed. It's a wild so west. Can't prepare. I like it. <laughs> Man. Oh, but anyways, oh, somebody else had a 1911 in the, in the grenade guy's mouth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying grenade yeah. guy. Hey, to a oh. sergeant. Yeah, for, that from, uh, from So in our other unit. words, you knew a you knew a soldier that found a field expedient solution to the situation. No, I knew the actual story of what happened. Yeah, because we were right, there. And then I had to yeah. sit through a briefing. Homeboy found a field expedient solution to the situation. Anyway, so, well, yeah, yeah. But so, then I so I knew the actual story of what happened because yeah. I was there. And then I had to sit through the briefing on what they're briefing the entire U.S. military about what they say happened. Yeah. And, and so at the end of it, I pulled the instructor aside. I'm like, hey, like, uh, you know, this is wrong. <laughs> I got a little bit of inside information about that last briefing you did. And uh, I think some of your information wasn't really truthful. You know, I think some people just, get suicided, man. You know, maybe there's a common a fuck, theme dude. in this. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and the guy's like, uh, why? Well, I don't. I'm not trying to sound like an asshole, but I really don't care. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I, I don't care what these slides say. I just have to say them and, and send a piece of paper into the, my command. That and says then I, I get a blue I cord. Did it. And then I get my teal cord. Well, no, he was. A, he had a GS job. He's just checking oh. the fucking boxes yeah. off. He's oh, like, I don't care. Yeah. Then my my entire, I don't know, uh, for the three years that I worked on the base over there, all of it was that. I don't care. I just need to check the box so I can keep my job. You worked out three years in Kuwait? No, in oh, Belgium. Oh. Um, but, like, I was trying to, like... It's about to be like, fuck you. These are the you. same cats that sent you to be a CrossFit instructor, too, aren't they? Well, yeah, like, but I also, got to, do an, shit I also got to do uh, an adaptive sports clinic, which was now, for wounded that, dudes. That's that, cool when you were telling now, me about cool that, shit. that was legit The cool shit. thing about the adaptive sports clinic is uh, if they're wounded guys, they have to be involved in these programs. And if they're not... if if they don't offer the programs, um, then these guys don't do it. Then they get kicked out of the, all the recovery stuff because they're missing their appointments, even though their unit didn't supply the things that they needed. Huh. So we had guys in RAO that had to do these programs. That's why they sent me this class. So I get certified. I come back. I have all the fucking Army regs that are like, this is, this has to happen, and you have to get funding for it. Went back, did my, my debrief back to the base commander the whole nine. He's like, yeah, we support you 100%, everything you want to do. Uh, we just can't give you a dollar. I'm like, oh, well, this army regulation says you have to. He's like, uh, well, I'm the base commander. I don't, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, well, sir. Yeah, no, so I went all the way up the chain. I was fucking two-star generals on email, email chains and everything. Uh, needless to say, I quit. And uh, about six months after I quit, Rob. the entire place got revamped. It was pretty funny. So, but I mean, huh. it's important. It's important that there's guys out to you that are, like, fighting the good fight. It's like the judge out in Montana. What a good motherfucker. This dude, he's <laughs> fighting the right fight. Yeah. Like, I don't think we talked about We talked about that before the podcast. Yeah, I don't think we talked about it on... Ca- so, let's let's uh, tell that, because that's, that's kind so of some current events. It's hilarious. Montana, two cats get arrested. Two scumbags. Two scumbags get arrested for yeah. burglary and possession were the charges. Yep. Uh, find out that there's a veteran court that you can go to. For has, veteran scumbags. For veteran scumbags. <laughs> <laughs> Which aren't as bad as regular scumbags, apparently. But the, the program is supposed to be designed that, hey, at We're one point in your life... At one point I love you guys. Yeah. Yeah. At one point in your life... We wouldn't change you for anything. At one point in your life, you were, we assume, squared away, and that's how you got veteran status. So uh, let's see what we can do to get you back to the state of squared away. So these two scumbags decide that they're going to go, oh, well, we're veterans. So they go to court and, of course, can't prove anything and the court did their due diligence and turns out that no you're not veterans oh. but still made it into this courtroom yeah but welcome to our courtroom now welcome to our courtroom <laughs> Total huh. dollar fuck take a seat i am <laughs> i am judge veteran yeah. and we're gonna have a little talk and he's a judge so he's probably like a retired fulk and full bird or something yeah, some <laughs> like, right? like, well, know, we all know he's a jig like, yeah came, came, judge, him, right? came from the, <laughs> like staff judge advocate right from fucking, came like, from camp the Lejeune jag or some right, shit blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, fuck you so find these cats I had 15 years in leavenworth but i wasn't on the inside <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sit down buddy <laughs> <laughs> these cats come in hey we're veterans and the judge goes hey no you're not <laughs> so let's have a little talk so I'm going to sentence you to 10 years in prison. And on top of that, every veteran in Memorial Day, we're going to drag you out to the Montana Veteran Memorial during the services. Cause they under have supervision. A, under, under supervision. Yeah. Uh, because every Veterans Memorial Day, they have a service that takes place at the uh, Montana Veteran Memorial. And you're going to stand there with a sign that says, I am a liar. I am not a veteran. I stole valor. I have dishonored all veterans. How do I sign up to be 
the supervisor. The supervisor that's standing there? Yeah. Because I'm going to hold a sign and, and just yell, Hey, yeah. everybody look at this guy! Yeah, just a big arrow. <laughs> <laughs> but just wait, go buy some of those, like, those sign spitter dudes. Just write some of those <laughs> dudes. Like, look at this but fucking wait, asshole. Big <laughs> there's more. This cat, these cats then had to hand write all 6,600 plus casualties that we've had during the War on Terror. Then they had to handwrite all 40 obituaries of the fallen soldiers from Montana. They also had to write apology letters to, like, the DAV, the VFW, AMVET. Uh, uh, there was a couple of others, there was too. Like five or there was, like, six five or six organizations, organizations that they had to write letters to. 441 and community then 441 hours. community service hours, which I still haven't figured out the 441. That's a You know, I thought number. about that That's today because we talked about this morning on, on American Grit, you and I did. And yeah, we briefly covered the story. But and, and I thought about that. I'm assuming that there's a maximum amount that you can do per statute that they were doing. You know what I mean? Uh, like all the charges combined, this is what you get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm but assuming that's what it is. Keep but. in mind, that was after they freaking pull a tenor. Yeah. Yeah. In like the state pin. So yeah. Dude, you know how parole boards work though, yeah. bro. Like, like, I mean, he got sentenced to 10 years. He's going to do fucking four. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, like, so three of them apparently were like automatically deferred or whatever. Yeah. Like three of them were suspended. I guess it's like a three year. Yeah. They like, do like, sus- like you so much sus- as get a speeding ticket in these three years and you're going back to prison kind of situation. Mm-hmm. But the only reason I bring it up is it's like what y- you were doing, right? Like you saw a situation where these guys, they, they needed the help. They needed, they needed the services that needed to be provided and all that kind of stuff. Somebody got in the way you fought their good fight. And you know, unfortunately they didn't get changed while you were there, but it got changed. It, it did get changed, right? <laughs> and this judge is kind of doing that time. same yeah. thing. This judge is looking I, at it going like, hey, we set up this program because these are guys that in the past have shown the discipline to be squared away. So we're going to set this program up to where maybe you lost your way. We're going to see if we can't square you away and like and bring you back into it. And these dudes tried to cheese that system. And this judge was like, nah, I got a little something special for you. You go ahead and try and steal this shit. And we got problems. And this is a judge that's been sentencing shit bags. Even if shitbags that wore the uniform or not, yeah, and was still like, nope. Uh, there's two classifications of shitbags. There's the shitbag that wore the uniform, so they're still carrying at least a little bit more honor than you. And then there's just you. That's such a shitbag that you're gonna try and steal somebody else's. Like, yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't think he could pinch him officially under stolen valor because they they weren't trying to monetize it. Because yeah, that's like the new, that, off, like yeah. when Obama. Because remember, remember it was it was illegal under Bush, and then Obama came in and he changed it, and yeah. then it was. Yeah, that was people, that whole you can wear the uniform if it was as long as you don't make any money on it. People, well, re- people like, started whatever. abusing it, so that he changed yeah. it again. He was like, "I'm reinstating stolen valor, the stolen valor act," but now it, <laughs> like there was a provision where like. In order to be officially stealing valor, you had to be making money off of that. So, like yeah, those guys yeah. that are like, "I am a war hero, donate to me," shit like that. That's stolen yeah. valor. That's how you or get. Or you like, try fucking... to use veterans' preference to get something. Yeah, yeah. stuff yeah, like, like out that. Of jail I mean, time? there was there, like, like out job. of jail time. Yeah, but there, there was <laughs> there was certain like uh, like wickets that you had to hit in order to be officially right. stolen valor. And I don't think trying to get out of fucking like getting in, get into veterans court. Is one of those wickets, obviously, but I don't know, man. I would say that's I, I, uh, definitely a profit-making effort if you're trying not to go to jail for ten. Five I years. like that judge, well, though, man. That I judge is it, my dude. But that's a judge right there. That, that that's a freedom defender right there. Yeah, he man. Was just like that's a good freedom friend. That's a good freedom friend. Definitely, yeah, man. Well, gents, Scott, you're a good freedom friend. So are you, Mikey. Thanks, buddy. John, John? you're a damn good freedom friend. Good man. freedom friend. Oh, thanks, guys. You guys are the best freedom friends. <laughs> <laughs> and now so we just went one, super soft. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say, Mikey, another damn fine beverage, Thank my you, man. Sir. Appreciate it. Damn and good. Uh, to you boys over at Warfighter, you keep making these badass sticks because they're uh, delicious as hell. For real. And uh, Warfighter.com. WarfighterTobacco.com. Correct. Sorry, that's the... Uh, Cheers, buddy. Cheers. You can uh, have a little taste of what we're tasting. Mikey told you how to make the drink. But uh, thanks for being our freedom friends. Everybody. Thanks for being our freedom friends out there in podcast land. Yeah. And until next time, uh, smoke on, drink on, keep loving freedom. Fucking absolutely, I, I love so it. Good. All right.